the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah. Here I send my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. He is a voice of one who shouts in the desert. Get the road ready for the Lord. Make the paths straight for him. John the baptizer appeared in the desert and was preaching a baptism conditioned on repentance to obtain the forgiveness of sins. And people from all over Judea and everybody in Jerusalem kept on going out to him and being baptized by him in the Jordan River, confessing their sins. Now John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist and he used to live on dried locusts and wild honey. He kept preaching the following message, After me there is coming one who is stronger than I am, whose shoes I am not fit to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you in water, but he will baptize you in the Holy Spirit. Now in those days Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as soon as he started to come up and out of the water, he saw the heavens split open and the Spirit coming down like a dove to enter him. And out of the heavens came a voice, You are my Son, my Beloved. In you I am delighted. Then the Spirit at once drove him out into the desert. And he stayed in the desert forty days while he was being tempted by Satan. Yea, he was with the wild beasts, but the angels continued to wait upon him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time is ripe and the kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe in the good news. As he was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting their nets in the sea, for they were fishermen. So Jesus said to them, Come, follow me, and I will make you fishermen for catching men. And at once they forsook their nets and followed him. He walked on a little farther and saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They too were in their boats getting their nets in order. He at once called them. They left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and went after him. They went into Capernaum, and as soon as the first Sabbath came, he went into the synagogue and began to teach. And they were dumbfounded at his teaching, for he was teaching them like one who had authority to teach, and not like the scribes. Just at that moment there was a man in their synagogue who was under the spell of a foul spirit, and so he screamed, What do you want of us, Jesus, you Nazarene? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are. God's Holy One. Jesus reproved him, saying, Hush up, get out of him. Then the foul spirit convulsed him, and with a deafening shriek got out of him. They were all so dumbfounded that they kept discussing it amongst themselves and asking, What does this mean? It is a new teaching. He gives orders with authority even to foul spirits, and they obey him and his fame at once spread in all directions all over that part of Galilee. As soon as they left the synagogue, they went home with Simon and Andrew, in company with James and John, and Simon's mother-in-law was confined to her bed with a fever. So they at once tell him about her. Then he went up to her, grasped her hand, and had her get up. The fever left her, and she began to wait upon them. In the evening, when the sun had gone down, they kept on bringing to him all the people who were sick or under the power of demons, and the whole town gathered at the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases, and drove out many demons, and would not let the demons speak a word, because they knew who he was. Early in the morning, long before daybreak, he got up and went out to a lonely spot and stayed praying there. And Simon and his companions diligently searched for him and found him and said to him, Everybody is looking for you. And he said to them, Let us go somewhere else, to the neighboring towns, to preach in them too, for that is why I came out here. 
So he went all over Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. There came to him a leper, begging him on his knees, saying to him, If you want to, you can cure me. And his heart was moved with pity for him. So he stretched out his hand and touched him and said, I do want to be cured. And the leprosy at once left him and he was cured. But Jesus at once drove him out of their presence and gave him this stringent charge. See that you tell nobody a single word about it. Be gone. Show yourself to the priest and to prove it to the people, make the offering for your purification, which Moses prescribed. But he went out and began to publish it so much and to spread the story so far that Jesus could not any more go into any town openly, but had to stay out in thinly settled places. But the people kept coming to him from every quarter. After some days, he came back to Capernaum, and it was reported that he was at home. And so many people gathered there that there was no longer any room even around the door. He was telling them his message. Then four men came bringing to him a paralyzed man. And as they could not get him near to Jesus on account of the crowd, they dug through the roof over the spot where he was standing and let the pallet down that the paralyzed man was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, My son, your sins are forgiven. Some scribes were sitting there arguing and saying to themselves, Why is he talking this way? He is blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Now Jesus at once felt in his spirit that they were arguing about this and said, Why are you arguing to yourselves about this? Which is easier, to say to the paralyzed man, Your sins are forgiven, or to say to him, Get up, pick up your pallet, and start walking? But to show you that the Son of Man has authority to forgive sins on earth, turning to the paralyzed man, he said, I tell you, get up, pick up your pallet, and go home. Then he got up and at once picked up his pallet and went out before them all. The result was that they were all dumbfounded and began to praise God and say, We have never seen anything like this before. He went out of the town again and along the seashore, and all the people kept coming to him and he kept teaching them. And as he was passing by, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting in the tax collector's office. And he said to him, Follow me. Then he got up and followed him. Levi was at a table in his house, and he had many tax collectors and notorious sinners as guests, along with Jesus and his disciples. For there were many of them, and they began to follow him. And when the scribes who belonged to the Pharisees' party saw that he was eating with notorious sinners and tax collectors, they said to his disciples, Why does he eat with tax collectors and notorious sinners? Jesus heard it and said to them, Not well, but sick people have to send for the doctor. It is not upright, but sinful people that I have come to invite. Now John's disciples and the Pharisees were keeping a fast. So some people came and asked him, Why do John's disciples and the Pharisees' disciples practice fasting, but yours never do? Jesus answered them, The wedding guests cannot fast, can they, while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. But a time is coming when the bridegroom will be taken away from them, and then they will fast. No one sews a patch of brand new goods on an old coat, or, if he does, the patch tears away, the new from the old, and the whole becomes bigger than ever. No one puts new wine into old wine bottles, or, if he does, the wine will break the bottles, and the wine is lost, and the bottles too. New wine is to be put up in new bottles. On the Sabbath, he was passing through the wheat fields, and his disciples started to make a path by pulling off the wheat heads. So the Pharisees were saying to him, Just look, why are they doing on the Sabbath what it is against the law to do? He answered them, Have you never read what David did when he and his soldiers were in need and hungry? How is it that he went into the house of God 
when Abiathar was high priest and ate the sacred loaves, which it is against the law for anyone except the priest to eat, and gave part of them to his soldiers too. Then he said to them, The Sabbath was made to serve man, and not man to keep the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even in the Sabbath. Then he went into a synagogue again, and a man was there who had a withered hand, and they kept closely watching him to see whether he would cure him on the Sabbath to get a charge to bring against him. But he said to the man with the withered hand, Get up in the crowd. Then he asked them, Is it right to do people good on the Sabbath, or to do them evil, to save life, or to take it? But they had nothing to say. So Jesus looked around at them in anger, because he was pained over their stubbornness of mind, and said to the man, Hold out your hand. And he held it out, and his hand was cured. Then the Pharisees went out and held a consultation with the Herodians against him, to put him to death. So Jesus retired with his disciples to the sea, and a vast throng of people followed him from Galilee, and from Judea, and from Jerusalem, and from Idumea, and from the other side of the Jordan, and from the neighborhood of Tyre and Sidon. Yes, a vast throng of people, as they kept hearing of the great things that he was doing, came to him. So he told his disciples to keep a little boat ready for him all the time, to prevent the crowds from crushing him. For he cured so many people that all who had ailments kept crowding up against him to touch him. And whenever the foul spirits saw him, they fell down before him and screamed, You are the Son of God. But he charged them time after time not to tell who he was. Then he went up on the hillside and summoned to him those whom he wanted. And they went to him, and he appointed the twelve to whom he gave the title Apostles to be with him, to send them forth and to preach, and to have the right to drive out the demons. The twelve whom he appointed were Peter, the name which he gave to Simon, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, James' brother, Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. Then he went home, and again the crowds gathered so that it was not possible for them even to take their meals. His kinsmen heard of it and came over to get hold of him, for they kept saying, He has gone crazy. And the scribes who had come down from Jerusalem kept saying, He is under the spell of Beelzebub, and by the help of the prince of the demons he drives out the demons. So he called them to him, and continued speaking to them in short stories as follows. How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is disunited, that kingdom cannot last. And if a household is disunited, that household cannot last. And if Satan has made an insurrection against himself and become disunited, he cannot last, but is surely coming to an end. But no one can get into a giant's house and carry off his goods unless he first binds the giant. After that, he can make a clean sweep of his house. I solemnly say to you, men will be forgiven for all their sins and all the abusive things they say, but whoever speaks abusively against the Holy Spirit can never get forgiveness, but is guilty of a sin that has no end. He said so because they kept saying, He is under the spell of a foul spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came. They were standing outside and sent word to call him. And a crowd was sitting around him when they told him, Your mother and your brothers are outside asking for you. He answered them, Who are my mother and my brothers? Then, looking around at the people sitting about him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. Then he began again to teach by the seashore, and a crowd gathered around him so great that he got into a boat and was sitting in it, just off the shore, while all the people were on the land close to the sea. He continued teaching them by many stories. In his teaching, he spoke to them as follows. Listen, a sower went out to sow. As he was sowing, some of the seed fell along the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Some fell upon rocky ground, 
where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up at once, because the soil was not deep. But when the sun came up, they were scorched and withered away, because they had not taken root. Some fell among the thorn seed, and the thorns grew up and choked them out, and they yielded no grain. Some fell in rich soil, and came up and grew, and yielded thirty, sixty, even a hundredfold. And he said, Let him who has ears listen. When he was by himself, those who stayed about him with the twelve began to ask him about the stories. Then he said to them, To you the secret of the kingdom of God has been entrusted, but to those who are on the outside everything is presented in stories, so that they may look and look and yet not see, and listen and listen and yet not understand, lest perchance they should turn and be forgiven. Then he said to them, If you do not understand this story, how indeed can you understand any of my stories? The message is what the sower sows. The ones along the path are those who have the message sown in their hearts. But as soon as it is sown there, Satan comes and carries off the message that has been sown in their hearts. In like manner, these are the ones sown on rocky ground. As soon as they hear the truth, they accept it with ecstasy. But it does not take real root in them, and so they last only a little while. Then, when trouble or persecution comes on account of the truth, they at once fall by the way. A different class are those people sown among the thorns. They are people who listen to the message, but the worries of the times, the deceiving pleasures of being rich, and evil desires for other things creep in and choke the truth out, and it yields nothing. And the people sown in rich soil are the people who listen to the message and welcome it and yield thirty, sixty, even a hundredfold. Then he put a question to them. A lamp is not brought to be put under a peck measure or under a bed, is it? Is it not rather to be put on the lamp stand? For nothing is ever hidden by people except for the purpose of having it known. And people do not keep secrets except to tell them. If anyone has ears, let him listen. And he was saying to them, Take care what you hear. The measure you give will come back to you, and more besides. For whoever has will have more given to him, but whoever has nothing, even what he has will be taken away. He also was saying, The kingdom of God is like a man who scatters seed on the ground, then continues sleeping by night and getting up by day, while the seed sprouts and comes up without his knowing how. The ground of itself produces, first the stalk, then the head. At last there is the matured grain of wheat in the head. But as soon as the crop will permit it, he puts in the sickle, for the reaping time has come. Then he kept on saying, How can I further picture the kingdom of God, or by what story can I illustrate it? It is like a mustard seed, which when it is sown in the ground is the smallest of all seeds. But when it is properly sown, it comes up and grows to be the largest of all the plants, and produces branches so large that the wild birds can roost under its shade. With many stories like these, he kept on telling them the message as far as they could understand it. He did not tell them anything except by stories, but to his own disciples he kept on privately explaining everything. That same day, when it was evening, he said to them, Let us go over to the other side. So they left the crowd and took him in the boat in which he was sitting, and there were other boats with him. But a furious squall of wind came up, and the waves were dashing over into the boat, so that it was fast filling. He was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. So they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, is it no concern to you that we are going down? Then he aroused himself and reproved the wind, and said to the sea, Hush, be still. And the wind lulled, and there was a great calm. Then he asked them, Why are you afraid? Have you no faith yet? They were very much frightened and said to one another, 
Who can he be that even the wind and the sea obey him? So they landed on the other side of the sea, in the region of Gerasa. As soon as he got out of the boat, a man under the power of a foul spirit and from the tombs met him. This man lived among the tombs, and no one could any longer subdue him even with a chain, for he had often been fastened with fetters and chains, but had snapped the chains and broken the fetters, and no one was strong enough to overpower him. All night and all day he kept screaming among the tombs and on the hills, and kept gashing himself with stones. On catching a glimpse of Jesus from a distance, he ran up and fell down on his knees before him and screamed out loud, What do you want of me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? In God's name I beg you, do not torture me. For Jesus was saying to him, You foul spirit, come out of him. He asked him, What is your name? He answered, My name is Legion, for we are many. And they kept on earnestly begging him not to send them out of that country. Now there was a large drove of hogs grazing on the hillside, and they begged him, Send us among the hogs so that we can get into them. So he let them do so, and the foul spirits came out of the man and got into the hogs, and the drove of about two thousand rushed over the cliff and into the sea and were drowned. Then the hog feeders fled and spread the news in the town and in the country around, and the people came to see what had taken place. When they came to Jesus and saw the man who had once been insane under the power of many demons sitting with his clothes on, and in his right hand they were frightened. And those who had seen it told them how it occurred to the man who had been under the power of the demons and about the hogs. Then they began to beg Jesus to leave their neighborhood. And as he was getting into the boat, the once insane man kept begging him to let him go with him. However, he did not let him, but said to him, Go home to your folks and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and has taken pity on you. And so he went away and began to tell everybody in the ten cities how much Jesus had done for him, and everybody was dumbfounded. When Jesus again had crossed in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered about him, and he was standing on the seashore. And a man named Jairus, a leader of a synagogue, came up, and when he saw Jesus, he flung himself at his feet and kept earnestly begging him, saying, My dear little daughter is at the point of death. Come, lay your hands on her, so that she may get well and live. So he went off with him, and a great crowd kept following him and jostling him. Then a woman who had had a hemorrhage for twelve years and had suffered much at the hands of many doctors and had spent all she had and yet was not a whit benefited but rather grew worse, heard the reports about Jesus. So she came up in the crowd behind him and touched his coat, for she kept saying, If I can only touch his clothes, I shall get well. Her hemorrhage stopped at once, and she felt in her body that she was cured. Jesus at once perceived that power had gone out of him, and so he turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? But the disciples kept saying to him, You see the crowd jostling you, and yet you ask, Who touched me? Still he kept looking around to see her who had done it. So the woman, as she knew what had taken place for her, though frightened and trembling, came forward and fell on her knees before his feet and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, My daughter, your faith has cured you. Go in peace and be free from your disease. Even while he was saying this, people came from the house of the leader of the synagogue and said, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any longer? But Jesus paid no attention to what was said but said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not be afraid, only keep up your faith. He let no one go with him but Peter, James, and James' brother John. They came to the home of the leader of the synagogue, and there he saw confusion, and people weeping and wailing without restraint. And he went into the house and said to them, Why do you continue all this confusion and crying? The little girl is not dead, but is sleeping. 
Then they began to laugh in his face. But he drove them all out and took the little girl's father and mother and the men with him and went into the room where the little girl was. Then he grasped her hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means little girl, I tell you, get up. And the little girl at once got up and started walking around, for she was 12 years old. And instantly they were completely dumbfounded. But he strictly charged them to let nobody know about it and told them to give her something to eat.